Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we are going to see a problem which is merge overlapping intervals. In this problem you will be given a set of time intervals in any order and you have to merge all the overlapping intervals into one and then finally output the result which should have only mutually exclusive intervals. So let's see uh, what do we mean by uh, this problem statement. So uh, for example, you'll have uh, this as the uh, input. So the interval will be, uh, will be from 1 to 3, then 2 to 4, then 5 to 7, and then 6 to 8. And you have to actually merge the uh, overlapping intervals. So as you can see that 1, 3, and 2, 4, these two intervals are actually overlapping. So 1, 3 contains all the values from 1 to 3, and 2 to 4 contains all the values from 2 to 4. So the values from 2 to 3 is actually overlapping in both of these intervals. So we actually have to merge it and we have to merge it into 1 comma 4. So this, this becomes 1 comma 4. Similarly for this, uh, these two intervals for 5 to 7 and 6 to 8. So again, uh, 6 to 7 is the common here. So we merge these two intervals and it becomes 5 to 8. So 5 to 8. Also for the uh, sake of simplicity, I uh, will be representing the intervals as the pair of integers. Okay, so uh, now what we need to do is we need to write a function which produces a set of merge intervals for the given set of intervals. Fair enough. So uh, let's look at the uh, two approaches. So first one is the uh, brute force approach, uh, which will be trying every combination out. So a simple approach is to start with the first interval and compare it with all the other intervals for overlapping. So this is kind of a brute force algorithm that you try every possible combination and then you get to a result. So you compare it with all the other intervals for overlapping. If it overlaps with any other interval, then remove the other interval from the left and merge the other into the first interval. Repeat the same for the remaining intervals after the first. This approach cannot be implemented in better than order of n square time complexity. So because you are trying every possible combination actually, so the time complexity becomes order of n square. Because for say for the first element, you are actually comparing it with all the other elements. Then you come to the second element, then you are comparing it with the all the other elements. So this kind of approach is actually n square time complexity. So we cannot do better than n square if we follow this brute force or the simple approach. Uh, so the better approach uh, is this, this one which we will now discuss. So an efficient approach is to first sort the intervals according to the starting time. So we are going to sort all the intervals uh, from the uh, smallest uh, starting time to the uh, largest starting time. Once you have sorted the intervals, we can combine all the intervals in a linear tra traversal. So now we'll see how we combine all the, all the overlapping intervals in a linear traversal. So the idea is in a sorted array of intervals, if interval i doesn't overlap with interval i minus 1, so interval i is not overlapping with interval i minus 1, then interval i plus 1 cannot overlap with interval i minus 1 because the starting point of interval i plus 1 must be greater than or equal to interval i. So basically because uh, you have sorted the intervals, so uh, if we talk about uh, the overlapping uh, situation here, so if the interval i doesn't overlap with the interval i minus 1, so the current, in current interval doesn't overlap with the previous interval, if that is the case, then the next interval cannot overlap with the uh, previous interval. So that is uh, actually uh, very simple. So we are going to uh, exploit this fact and we are going to use it in our algorithm. So here is the uh, algorithm. So we first of all uh, sort the intervals based on the increasing uh, order of their starting time. Uh, so this is the first step that is the sorting. Then we push the uh, first interval onto the stack. So 
uh, once we have done the sorting here, we push the first element onto the stack. Then what we do is for each interval, we do the following. Uh, we if the first if the current interval does not overlap with the stack top, push it. So we compare the current interval with the top of the stack. If it doesn't uh, overlap, we just push it. So the element which which we just push becomes the uh, new top of the stack. If that is not the case and the current interval overlaps with the top of the stack, then what we do is then uh, we update the stack top with the ending time of the current interval. So because the starting times are already uh, sorted, so the top of the stack will have the starting time as uh great as less than or equal to the starting time of the current uh, interval so we just need to update the ending time of the current interval and we will be done we do not need to push anything we just updated the top of the stack so we keep doing this step three as long as we have uh intervals in in our list and once we are done so at the end the stack contains the merge interval so we just uh, pop out all the elements out of the stack and then we have the uh, desired output which is the merged intervals so let's look at the code for it so here we see that we have uh, standard header file declarations then we create a structure which is an in, which is named interval so which just contains the starting and the ending uh, points now uh, here is just a small utility function which is comparing two intervals so it takes as an argument interval one and interval two once it gets that what uh, you what you can uh, actually do with these values is that uh, you return uh, whichever is the wh whoever elements is the the starting point is the smallest so if the starting point of the first interval is uh, less than the uh, starting point of the second element then we return true otherwise we return false so this is a compare interval function so why do we need this we actually need this in the sorting so when we'll be uh, calling the uh, sort method uh, on the on the array uh, of the intervals then we'll actually need a compare interval because we are not actually sorting just uh, some basic uh, data structures like integer or string or float we are actually uh, sorting a complex data structure which is a structure so in that case we need to provide a uh, a custom sorter function basically so uh, let's see uh, the actual function so we have the merge intervals wherein you get uh, the array of uh, intervals and the size n so that is the size of the array then we test if the given set has at least one interval so if it has at least one interval then we are fine otherwise we just return uh, then we create a stack uh, stack s uh, of the type interval then what we do is we actually call the sort method so we pass in the uh, starting index this is the pointer to the starting element the pointer to the last element and our custom compare function so what it does is actually uh, sorts the array uh, arr array and uh, we we after this statement is executed we get the uh, sorted array okay so as per the algorithm now we'll push on push the first element onto the stack so uh, the stack which we just created here we push the first element of our array onto the stack that is array zero now we uh, start from the next interval and merge if necessary so you see that we are running a loop from i equal to one instead of i equal to zero because we have already uh, pushed the first element onto the stack uh, now what we do is we first of all get the element which is at the top then what we'll do is we now will now compare the current element with the element at the top so if the uh, end of the top is less than the uh, start of the current element then we push it which means that they are not overlapping otherwise it means that they are overlapping 
So what we'll do is we'll actually update the uh, end pointer of the top end value of the top actually. So uh, we update the end as we discussed in the algorithm. The starting point of the top will actually be already less than or equal to the starting point of the uh, current uh, interval. So we do not need to update the starting uh, point. We just need to update the end. So we update the end, then we do a pop on the stack and then we push our top. So this top uh, with the updated end uh, value is actually going on to the uh, stack and the previous value is already popped. So uh, we keep doing this and in the end we'll actually be having the uh, our desired output which is the uh, array of stack uh, basically array of intervals uh, with no overlapping intervals. So then we uh, just print out the uh, stack. So we uh, keep uh, looking at the uh, top of the stack. We print the start and the end values and then we pop out an element. So let's see the uh, driver method. So here we had the uh, all the four intervals and then we calculated the size of the array and then we finally passed both of these values to the merge intervals which is the uh, that is the array and the at size so we pass it to the merge intervals and it merges and it sends us the uh, it get, gets us the desired output so the uh, time complexity of this method becomes order of n log n uh, which is also for sorting so once the arrays uh, of interval is sorted then the merging takes the linear time so and the time complexity is only taken up by the uh, sorting algorithm and not by the uh, merging so uh, now uh, let's look at an order of n log n and order of one extra space solution uh, basically what 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 is happening is that uh, the above solution which we have discussed is actually uh, uh, requires the order of n extra space which is for the stack and uh, now we are looking at a solution wherein uh, we do not need that extra space for the stack so we can avoid the use of extra space by doing a merge operations in place so let's see how we are going to do this so the first step remains the same sort all the intervals in decreasing order of the start time so that remains uh, uh, actually the uh, similar to the first method then what we do is we traverse the sorted intervals starting from the first interval and we keep doing the following so if the current interval is not the first interval and it overlaps with the previous interval then merge it with the previous interval so now we are going to uh, go one step back so if it is the first element we do nothing if it uh, if it is the second element then what we do is we actually compare it with the previous uh, element which um, in in our case the previous interval so we compare the current interval with the previous interval uh, if they are overlapping we merge it otherwise we don't so another thing is that we keep on uh, checking so once we have merged the previous interval with the current interval we check the uh, previous of the uh, now the the merged uh, intervals previous interval so we keep on backtracking basically uh, till the point uh, the previous is not actually overlapping with the current interval why do we need to do this is basically because you can have a situation wherein you get a very big interval uh, somewhere like say fifth element you have a very big interval which actually can consume which has overlapping intervals with the all the previous four so we need to merge all the five into one so that is how we need to keep going back until and unless it is not overlapping uh, once that is done we add the current interval to the out of output of the list of intervals so note that if intervals are not sorted by decreasing order of the start time if intervals are sorted by increasing uh, decreasing order of the start time we can quickly check if intervals overlap and not by comparing start times of the intervals with the end time of the current intervals so uh, let's see the uh, code for it so we again have a structure 
with the start and the end uh, values then we have the merge interval method uh, which takes as an argument the interval array and the size of the array now we uh, just call the uh, sort here which is similar to the uh, previous uh, previous actual uh, previous solution which we just saw then we initialize the index equal to zero so index is the last element in the output array so we are going to use the same array as for the output also so index will be the index of the last element of the that sorted uh, last element of the output array and we'll have another pointer say i uh, so that iterator will basically keep on looping so uh, index is uh, the iterator which uh, will be of the output array so the iterator i basically will be iterating over the whole of the array so if this is not the first interval and overlaps with the previous interval so if the uh, current first of all if index is not equal to zero that means it is not the first element and the element at index index minus one we are comparing it with the element at index i so if the starting point is less than or equal to the ending point uh, then what we do is uh, we keep going back and we keep comparing the elements so we are actually comparing again the uh, starting point of the element at index index minus one with the ending uh, value of the uh, element at index i so if that is the case then we merge it so we merge both of these and we how do we merge it we comp, uh, the ending point is set to the maximum of the uh, both the values uh, and the starting point is set as the minimum of the uh, starting indexes starting values of both the uh, intervals once that is done we do a index minus minus because we need to keep going back and merge the intervals if they are overlapping so we keep doing this uh, if, if 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 it doesn't overlap with the previous we actually add it to the solution so uh, element int index index is actually uh, becomes equal to the area limited index i so we so whatever the elements are there from the index 0 to index uh, index here so all those elements are actually the output uh, array elements so we keep doing these so we have these if and else conditions we keep running these and at the end we keep updating the index as index plus one so once this loop ends then we'll again have the uh, output array which is the uh, array with uh, no intervals having the overlapping uh, parts so then we just uh, output the uh, merge intervals again the uh, driver method remains the same as in the previous uh, solution so that is all for this tutorial thank you very much